In today's video, I'm going to tell you how I became a data analyst working in London. Hey everyone, my name is Junaid and I'm a graduate data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. I've currently been working as a data analyst for four months, going on to five. In today's video, I'm going to go over how I landed the role and the skills and tools that I think are the most important. Here are all the, where are the timestamps? Here are all the timestamps to the different sections. Feel free to skip around to whatever you feel is the most relevant to you. So I'm going to start off by giving you some background into the A-levels I studied, what I studied at university and the internships that I did along the way. So for A-levels I studied mathematics, biology, chemistry and the extended project. From there I went on to study finance with actuarial science at Bayes Business School. At university I did a few finance and investment related internships, the most useful one being as investment analyst at UBS. I can't overstate the value it provided me. The experience was far more practical than anything I'd done at university and a good internship gives you leverage in interviews and ended up being one of the sole reasons that I got the job offers that I did. When I was applying for jobs, I applied to a total of 156 jobs receiving first round interviews from 16, second round interviews from 15 and job offers from 13. From what I've read, that hit rate might sound pretty good, but at the beginning I'd started applying for the most highly touted graduate roles, analyst at Goldman, quant consultant at EY, investment analyst at boutique firms, even actuarial analyst roles. I found that for these types of roles, I was going up against applicants who had far more relevant work experience than I did. They'd done master's degrees, MBAs, and had at least three to four years of relevant work experience within the industry. So that kept tipping the scales out of my favor. So what I then did was I began applying for roles I didn't necessarily want, but these roles would generally receive fewer applications. And so the firms would be able to provide me with some feedback on my application. So I used the feedback from these applications to amend and tweak my CV. I found another very underutilized point of information in job hunting is LinkedIn. So I would look at other people's profiles, those who had landed analyst roles, see their experience, the courses they'd taken, what they studied at university, what programming languages they knew. I'd reach out to them, connect with them, and ask them questions for advice, which I don't think as many people do on LinkedIn when they're job hunting and I received so much valuable information from people, I found that people are very willing to help. On my job tracker in Excel, I noted down the dates of when I'd applied to a job and the date they'd got back to me. This way I could look at the time frame and evaluate whether there was any time lag within their reply and I could use this to see which versions of my CV were the most prominent. Onto the CV and structuring it, I found that for all types of analyst roles. The one that works best is the Wall Street Oasis CV. I'll drop a link in the description to the one on their website. There's a very good system for structuring your skills within your CV called the STAR method. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. Recruiters and hiring managers love seeing when you deployed a skill set and the result you achieved using that skill set. The STAR method is much better than just having a list of all your skills bullet pointed. You need to be able to demonstrate when you had to use that skill and what you achieved using that skill. So overall, it was this process of finely tuning my CV, reaching out to people, uh, looking at application feedback, constantly tweaking my CV that allowed me to land my role as data analyst. In one of the interviews I had, my interviewer said that finding a job is a full-time job in and of itself and he couldn't have been more correct. Moving on to important skills and tools. The role as an analyst requires you to have a range of varied skills. As an analyst, you're a provider, educator and problem solver. So you need to have an analytical mindset. You'll need to be able to extract data from a database, evaluate its relevancy to your project and deliver the information you've extracted in a way that your client will understand. You need to be constantly asking questions of yourself, your process, and your clients. As an example, some clients will have a different level of technical knowledge. And so the process of you questioning them to assess their technical expertise within the area will determine how you present 
the data to them. In large part, if a CEO of a company comes to you asking for information, they're not going to want in-depth analysis because they don't have time for that. They're just going to want the top numbers, the baseline information that will help them with their decision. Leading on from that is one of the most important skills as an analyst, which is curiosity. You need to be curious about industry development, developments within your field and role, curious about how you can automate and streamline your process, which can really help pay dividends in the long term. Moving on to the more technical skills, as an analyst, you have to, have to have a solid grounding in Excel. It doesn't matter what type of analyst, financial analyst, data analyst, investment analyst, risk analyst, a solid grounding in Excel is such an important skill to have. I read a quote on Investopedia which mentions the importance of Excel. It says, Working knowledge of Excel is vital for most office-based professionals today. It's likely you'll learn how to use and integrate Excel alongside your other databases on the job with practical experience, but a solid grounding in Excel and its functions is generally a very strong prerequisite. In fact, quite a few of my interviews required me to demonstrate knowledge of Excel. Um, I had to create a pivot table using fairly simple data and execute a VLOOKUP again on simple data. And these are fairly simple Excel formulas, but you end up using them on a daily basis, albeit in more complex scenarios. Another tool I use a fair amount now more than before is SQL for querying databases. It's very simple to learn, but can be tricky. Well, I found it can be tricky to apply in real world decisions making. Before I'd applied, I took a SQL for data science course by IBM. And if I can find it, I'll link that below as well. So SQL and Python are the next stepping stones I'd recommend after Excel. Personally, SQL is something I had very good technical knowledge of, but had not been able to use it in making real life corporate decisions. And that will come with experience on the job. The field of data science is always evolving. And with AI and machine learning, there's always more to keep on top of. If you're able to stay on top of these developments and processes, it'll allow you to future-proof yourself and take advantage of the progression within the industry. On my first day at the job, I was given the opportunity to attend a series of machine learning seminars, and now I'm part of the machine learning team of analysts. So in summary, internships apply to good internships. The leverage they allow you in interviews and the experience they provide is unmatched. Take advantage of LinkedIn. Reach out to people who are in the position that you want to be in. Structure your skills on your CV using the STAR method. Develop your analytical skills, be curious and proactive, and Excel skills. Hone in on Excel and as a next stepping stone, Python and SQL. I hope this was a useful insight into data analytics, the data science field, and how I navigated my way through. I'd be happy to answer any questions in the comments or connect on LinkedIn. I'll drop a link down below as well. If this was useful at all, don't subscribe. I've got too many subscribers as it is anymore and I won't be able to keep track. And I will see you guys in the next one.